Thank you everybody for joining me today. My name is Brody Newman. This series, we're going to be talking about functional programming in JavaScript. It's going to be a multi-part series, probably four or five videos long, um, but we're going to be diving into some complicated subjects. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I'll have all this code on my GitHub, so um, feel free to clone it and, and toy with some stuff. And if you run into any issues or hurdles, please reach out and I'll do my best to answer them. But thanks for joining and I hope you learned something. So the first topic that we're going to discuss today is this concept called pure functions. And before I dive into pure functions and before I start writing out some code examples, I wanted to talk about this idea of declarative programming. And I'm sure many people have heard of declarative programming before, um, but I'm gonna give my kind of definition of it. And I'll have a link below because I'm probably gonna butcher the explanation, but this is what kind of makes sense in my head. But declarative programming in my mind is a way of writing your logic and basically describing the flow of your applications in a way that the applications can be read like a poem. Imagine you have a, a program that's very imperative. Um, I guess you can compare it to like C or Go uh, in a way that you have to read the functions and dive into the logic to really understand what's going on. And if you write your programs in a declarative way, the function names and the order of logic will be able to explain how things are processing for you without having to dive into those functions and read through the logic, if that makes sense. So the concepts in these, in these videos are going to allow you to slowly introduce these concepts into your code base so that you can start building applications in this declarative approach. The first topic we're gonna to talk about today, like I said, is this idea of pure functions. And pure functions are a way of writing logic so that they're, the pieces and the functions are small and maintainable. They're reusable, they don't mutate anything outside of the function scope. And most importantly, they're extremely testable. And that's what's super crucial about building functional applications. The pieces are very modular. They're very easy to understand. They're very easy to assert on so that you can start building and abstracting your logic and piecing together more complex applications in a way that you're reducing the potential for error prone logic, if that makes sense. I'm gonna start by coding out a few examples of some impure functions so that you get an understanding of what you should look for and what you should keep in mind when writing good pure functions. The first example that I'm gonna write out is gonna be a function that is gonna be accessing a variable outside of the function scope. And please feel free to follow along with me in these examples. And like I said, if you have any questions, please reach out and I'll answer them. So I'm gonna start by creating a variable here called array. And it's gonna be a simple, a simple array. It's gonna have two strings in it. So I'm gonna have there and hello. And below that, I'm gonna write out a function called reverse array, can't type. And this function here is going to be accessing this array right here. And it's gonna be calling the reverse method on it. And then it's gonna join it back together with a string. So ideally, if I console log this and I do reverse array, and I switch, switch into my terminal and I run node pure JS, I'll see hello there. And this might seem fine and it might be fine for your application, but if we go ahead and add another console log right below that and we see what happened to this initial array, we should see something interesting. So if we look here, we initially created the array with two strings of there and hello, but you can see that after this function invocation here, it actually mutated that array and switched those strings around. Now this may not seem like a big issue just because the array here that we're mutating is inconsequential, but in the bigger picture, when, you're, when these subtle mutations are happening, it's a great way to introduce bugs in your logic. I promise you there's been many occasions where I've jumped into a code base and stuff like this was happening and I would spend a ton of time debugging and trying to figure out what was going wrong. So it's great just to keep this in mind, keep this idea that you should be copying things and creating new structures so that you're avoiding mutations at all cost. One simple way we can fix this reverse array function 
would be to basically create a new array or create a new function here called reverse array. And instead it's going to take in a parameter of the array. So I'll actually name this different just so it's not confusing. But what we're gonna do is we're going to actually copy that array by spreading it into a new array. And then we're gonna call reverse and then dot join. And you'll see that the fact that we're copying this, so I'll go ahead and actually pass this initial array into that function. But since it's spreading those values into the new array, that it's not going to be mutating that initial array outside of here. So I'll go ahead and run node peer.js. I don't know why I keep typing purse. But you'll see hello there is our expected outcome. And there hello is still maintained up here and, and not changed and not mutated. Another great way to tell if your functions are pure is if the function, if it's invoked a million times, a number arbitrary, but if the function is invoked over and over again, it should produce the same exact result every single time. One thing that I want to point out is that it's going to be hard avoiding mutation 100% of the time. There's obviously going to be cases where you can't avoid mutation. For example, if you want to set a timer, you want to make an HTTP request, um, you need to handle input streams when you're file streaming, cases like that, it's going to be hard to avoid that. But it's good to keep in mind that mutation is inherently bug prone, I guess you can say. And so in your mind, if you can try to avoid that as much as possible, it's going to help you build better applications. Another pretty common example of mutation that I see a lot in code bases is you'll see a function like um, I'm going to name it update user. And this update user function will take in some type of object. It's gonna just take in a user object in this case. And you'll see people that will um, assign to that parameter. Like in this case, I'm gonna do user.age equals uh, 25 and user.color equals green. And then they'll return that user and expect that um, update user equals update user. And I'm going to create a variable here called um, initial user. And what people are gonna expect is that, yeah, it's going to update that user object, but you'll see here, if I go ahead and log both the updated user and then the initial user, you can probably guess that since we're assigning to that parameter, that it's gonna be updating this object up here in memory. So I'll go ahead and invoke peer.js. And you can actually see that yes, it's returning us the result, but it's also updating that object outside of the scope because it's accessing the parameter and updating the parameter. So one way can we can avoid that is by, instead of updating the user right here, we can copy that. So I'll go ahead and say updated user and I'll spread in those old values. And everywhere I'm referencing user, I'll just change it to updated user. And if I go ahead and save this and run this, it shouldn't touch, in this case, it shouldn't touch the initial user and it should only return a new object. So let me go ahead and rerun node peer.js. And you can see that we're updating this object and then we're keeping the initial object pristine. Hopefully some of these examples make sense to you when it comes to building and, and writing pure functions. There's a lot of languages out there like Elm, for example, Elixir, um, JavaScript libraries like React and Redux that are focused on building in pure ways so that you're avoiding mutations at all costs so that you can build better applications and build applications that help you avoid bugs that are created while mutating. Hopefully this video made sense to everybody. If it didn't, like I said, please reach out and I'll be happy to answer questions. But the, the upcoming videos in this series the next videos are going to be building on top of this pure function concept. So please stay tuned. Um, and I promise you that you'll learn something new about functional programming in JavaScript. Thank you.